My name is Tammy Schmoon and I'm the Executive Director of Family Counseling Centers and I'm also a registered psychologist and a registered play therapist. And this is the second video in our series uh, and this is what to do when helping your children through divorce and separation. Um, I mean this is a pretty complex matter and there is a lot more than what I'm going to share with you but since we only have a few minutes I want to highlight some of the biggest things as you as a parent can do uh, to help your child. Now, I believe my uh, business partner, Jocelyn Nand, will also be talking about parental alienation. So I am not going to talk as much about um, what to do there, but there are certain things you can do to make things uh, easier on your kids, especially through transitions and emotionally. So one of the first things parents need to think about is offering their children honest but simple explanation of um, the divorce. Now, if there has been infidelity, I would not be sharing that with kids. Um, remember, one of the things we don't want to do is to create an alliance with one parent or the other. I always tell parents that your child is half of each of you. And the minute you start criticizing or blaming the other parent, a child internalizes that and they believe that then they are bad. Because remember, they're half of one of you. So the minute you are being negative about that other parent, you are hurting your children's sense of self because that they are part of uh, that other parent. Now, being available to listen is really important. Kids need don't need you to fix things, but they do need you to sit with them and listen to their feelings. And you need to, need to give space for their feelings because they are going to be angry and sad and have lots of confusing feelings. And so don't worry about fixing it. The child, the child knows what to do with their emotions, but they need to be given space to do it. And what it is, it's going through a grief process. And what we know about grief is one of the first stages is going to be anger. Uh, there may be denial, um, there may be sadness, you know, and they may, eventually there will be acceptance, but they need to go through these different phases. Um, and the more really what we know about emotions is, is the more space you give them, the less room they take. So don't be afraid of your child's emotional response. Um, it's completely normal for them to feel a lot of different conflicting emotions. So as a parent too, you need to do a lot of reassurance that it's going to be okay and it is not their fault. Um, I think most parents are very good about this, but it's you may need to say this a lot. Um, at this point, we would expect kids to be regressive in their behavior and to act more immature than they normally would. And being punitive and, and disciplining this is not helpful. Um, again, the more space you give for emotions, because that's what the immaturity looks like at this point, uh, the less room and less time it's going to take to move through it. So you really have to give space for that. Now, one thing parents um, need to think about is how to minimize the changes between households. So it's nice if kids can have things they don't have to haul back and forth between each house. So it's really easy for them, maybe just a few things like a teddy bear or a picture of the other parent, but it should be pretty consistent between both houses if it's possible. And I know it's hard financially in the beginning for parents. Um, those children should have a schedule that's regular and predictable. So not giving the children the choice to go back and forth between homes when they feel like it, whether it's a week on and a week off or with in one home for a whole week and then weekends with another parent, kids should know when it's coming. Um, they also need to be able to be given contact regularly with the other parent without criticism and without emotional monitoring of that other parent hovering during phone calls or video chats. So yes, that can be scheduled, but I would say if a child's struggling, you let them call the other parent as many times as they need. And you're giving space to say, it's okay to love that other parent and it's okay to miss them. And you as that parent can't take that personally. Your child loves you both the same, so they need that contact. And sometimes it's helpful for them to have a reminder of that other parent while they're at your house. So maybe they need a picture of that parent. Uh, maybe they need a piece of clothing from that parent. And you have to work on not feeling defensive about that and supporting that they, they're, they're sick for the other parent. They feel homesick for that other parent. And that's completely normal. And not to be defensive and take that personally. Because they're probably missing you just as much when they're with the other parent. You just might not hear about it. Now, this isn't a time to be a Disneyland mom or dad. Kids don't need 
special things. They need it to feel like things are back to normal. They need to feel like their life hasn't changed as much as they think they have. So routine is going to be really important. Keep them in the same activities they were in. Keep the bedtime the same as it was. You don't need to take extra trips. Now, what you can do is give them special time, but that doesn't mean things, it doesn't mean stuff, it doesn't mean trips. It just means giving them one-on-one -on -one attention every single day. And I would recommend, especially at the beginning, that each child gets 15 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with that parent that they're with, uh, without another sibling, if possible. Um, and then the other parent should be doing this as well until things start to normalize a little bit. Um, don't, I mean, J Jocelyn's going to talk about this, but I'll just state the obvious. Don't say bad things about the other parent. You know, don't talk, don't fight with each other in front of the kids, if possible. Those little ears are listening all the time. And often, even though you think you're in your room and you're being quiet as you can, yelling at the other parent on the phone, kids will often hear what's going on and they sense the tension. So looking for a time, maybe if you need to have that drop out, drag out fight. It's when the kids are, are at swimming lessons, not when they're in the house. Kids at this age need praise often. They need to be told they're good. They need to be told they're loved. They need to be told so much more that they're loved. Because at this point in time, they often feel that because you separated, they feel that maybe your love will run out for them if their love had ran out for the other partner. So I often use the analogy of a cup saying, you know, parents' love for each other can run out and it becomes, and as long as parents are okay with this, it becomes more of a friendship. But I say the cup um, for, for kids, I say it, it can never run out. It's this magic cup. And no matter how much you try to dump out the love, it just keeps filling up till it's overflowing. So there's nothing you could do to make that you love that child less. It's just unconditional. Um, don't make your child take sides. Um, don't make your child get, use your child to get revenge on the spouse or use your child as a messenger. If you have something to say to that parent, you need to say it, not relay the message with your children. And we see this a lot in pr private practice is um, kids being the little adults who have to run messages back and forth. Um, I hate to say it, but us, us as adults need to put our, 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 big, our big pants on, our big parent pants on and, and do this ourselves and not leave this up to our kids. Um, once you do start dating, wait to introduce your children to that special someone until it is a long-term stable relationship. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on that next and it's going to talk about how to do this. But regardless, um, that is a very difficult and very delicate thing to, to navigate with kids, so do not rush into that. And lastly would be you need to take responsibility as a parent for your behavior and also for to take care of yourself. Because if you are running on empty um, as a parent, you cannot give what you give to your children what they need during this tumultuous time. So you know get into your own counseling, spend time with friends, um, get an exercise routine, whatever you need to do to, so you better take care of yourself. And lastly, just remember um, more to that point about taking responsibility for your own behavior. You can't control what your spouse does. Um, so you might be following all these recommendations, but they're following none. But you can always control how you react to that parent. And maybe you are the source of comfort and stability for these, for these kids. So that's something just to remember. So I look forward to talking to all of you about introducing your kids to a new spouse in our next video.